Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fort Sam Houston and the Medical Center of Excellence. Today we celebrate the graduation ceremony for the Basic Officer Leaders Course Health Professional Scholarship Program Class 21-211. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation given by Captain Rennie John the 264th Medical Battalion Chapter. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we join with heaven as we celebrate and give thanks for every officer's graduating. Thank you for being with them throughout the course and honoring their hard work and keeping them safe as they engage in both classroom and field exercise. I pray that they may all feel proud this day and enjoy sharing their achievements with family and friends. May today be a memory that burns bright within them as they begin on their greatest adventure. I ask your powerful hand to be upon them throughout their career and life. Help everyone to stay true to their dreams, to use their gifts wisely, and to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love. Fill everyone's mind with your thoughts, bodies with your strength, hearts with your dreams to continue to serve you, the nation, and lead people with great enthusiasm and love. At this time, I remember and bless the instructors, cadre, and families sacrificially support for the success of these men and women. Lord, I truly trust you for the supernatural protection over our sisters and brothers currently serving in overseas and your unfailing love and care over our nation. Amen. Please take your seats. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Captain Lee DeMacchilangan, 4th Platoon Advisor for this class. On behalf of Colonel Shaw, Director of the Department of Leader Training, Lieutenant Colonel Huggins, Chief of the Basic Officer Leaders Course, staff and faculty, we would like to welcome you to today's graduation ceremony. Joining us today as members of the official party are today's guest speaker, Lieutenant General Leslie C. Smith, serving as the Inspector General 
Office of the Secretary of the Army. Lieutenant Colonel Huggins, Chief of the Basic Officer Leaders Force. Sergeant First Class Cassidy, NCYC of the Basic Officer Leaders Force. At this time, we would like to recognize all our military veterans that are present today. If you please stand and be recognized. Mrs. Smith, Ms. Smith, Colonel Anderson, Command Sergeant Major Colon, Colonel McCullough, Colonel Garcia, Colonel Retired Dawson, Colonel Retired Fuller, Command Sergeant Major Retired Francis, distinguished guests, cadre, family and friends, thank you for coming to today's graduation ceremony. For the families in attendance, we know that some of you have traveled from across the country to see your loved ones graduate from this course. Please give them a round of applause for their support. <laughs> the students you see before you arrived at Fort Sam Houston beginning on 21 June and are graduating today as members of the Basic Officer Leaders Course, Class 211. Each of these officers in front of you today has their own specialized training, responsibility, and expertise. They may have different jobs in the military and army medicine, but they all have something in common. They are commissioned officers. Commissioned officers are responsible for completing demanding missions while ensuring the welfare, morale, and professional development of the soldiers assigned to them. They are entrusted with serving as a model of the army values as they perform their leadership duties. The officers you see before you comprise a unique subset of officers within the army medicine part of the Health Profession Scholarship Program. This program offers prospective military physicians, dentists, veterinarians, and other medical professionals a paid medical education in exchange for service as a commissioned Army officer. After today, they are either going to their first active duty assignment or continuing their medical education at their respective civilian universities. This course provides a student with a basic foundation of what it means to be an Army officer, soldier, warrior, and leader. It provides an increased understanding of the U.S. Army, its various missions, and most importantly, how to contribute the success of those missions with character, competence, and commitment. Here at the Medical Center of Excellence, students focus on discipline, teamwork, basic soldier skills, tactical medical doctrine, and the leadership principles required to become an effective agile leader. The Basic Officer Leaders Course is staffed by both civilian and military personnel. Our military staff, also known as the Defense Advisors, alongside our civilian personnel, consists of members who have served in various deployed environments. The collaborative operational experience and knowledge they convey to the students are invaluable, and I'd like to thank them all for a job well done. Please give your cadre a round of applause. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of the Officer, Basic Officer Leaders Force, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Hudson. Mrs. Smith, Ms. Smith, Colonel Anderson, Sergeant Major Cologne, Colonel McCullough, Colonel Retired Buller, Colonel Retired Garcia, and Colonel Retired Dawson. Family members, friends, guests, and most importantly, the students of Health Profession Scholarship Program, Basic Officer Leaders Course 21-211. Thank you for being here. To all present, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us as these officers graduate today and move on in their military careers. Our basic officer leader course is routinely comprised of an assortment of medical professionals, from veterinarians to dentists to surgeons, behavioral health professionals, field medical assistants, and aeromedical evacuation pilots. We are chartered to provide newly commissioned Army Medical Department officers with a foundation enabling them to integrate with 
and provide medical support to the operational force. To that end, we have designed our course in two distinct phases. The first is the didactic phase in garrison, where we focus on a wide variety of topics of instruction to include Army leadership doctrine, fundamentals of Army health system support planning, and professional development. The second phase is conducted in a field environment that includes basic rifle marksmanship, Army warrior tasks and battle drills, including both day and night land navigation. The culminating event of our, of our FTX is called Operation Iron Hammer, focused on the employment of medical capabilities at the tactical level. This class is particularly impressive. It is the inaugural HPSP class executed with a recently developed training strategy. These students seated before you today have successfully negotiated all of the didactically challenging and tactically rigorous requirements to graduate in a 21-day period of time normally conducted over six weeks. Please give them a round of applause. Graduation today is a significant accomplishment, and this accomplishment didn't come with its own set of, didn't come without its own set of challenges. The challenge is what builds character. The challenge is also a great motivator. The secret to overcoming any challenge is very simple. Attempt the impossible, come out of your comfort zone, and violently engage trials head on. It's the ultimate measure of success. To the graduates, a single question remains to be answered. How will you use what you have learned throughout Bullock when you arrive at your first unit of assignment? Your soldiers will look to you to set the standard to be leaders of commitment, leaders of character, and leaders of confidence. The American public will also depend on you. Husbands, wives, sons, daughters, families, and friends will rely on you to take care of our nation's most precious resource, the American soldier. This is a tremendous responsibility. Based on the dedication and professionalism you have demonstrated throughout the course, we are confident you will succeed in this endeavor and carry on the proud tradition upon which countless medical professionals have built before you. To the men and women of the Bullock staff, I personally offer my gratitude for your hard work and all that you do. And most importantly to the family members and friends, both in the audience today and the ones that could not make it, these students could not have achieved the success they did without your love and support. Thank you. We are very fortunate today. Lieutenant General Leslie C. Smith is our guest speaker. Lieutenant General Smith has served in a wide variety of assignments ranging from tactical to operational to strategic. Cutting his teeth as a field artillery officer in the Georgia National Guard, he joined the active component as a chemical officer following graduation from Georgia Southern University. He is a proven leader, having led and commanded soldiers at every level to include being the first chemical officer to serve as a commanding general of the United States Maneuver Support Center of Excellence in Fort Leonard Wood. He is currently serving as the Inspector General, Office of the Secretary of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Smith. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Y'all fired up? I'm motivated, who are? And so this is a, a great day. How are we doing on comms check? Can y'all hear me okay? Because I'm going to walk around and make some comments. So I want to prove to you I'm not using any notes. So this is like straight from the head. 35 years, who are? All right, so congratulations. But if there was something I wanted to talk to you about, it would be what it means to be a professional. So you already were selected for medical school, right? You already raised your right hand and said you're going to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. But what I'm here to tell you is how that and why that profession is so important and why you are a trusted profession. But I need your help, boy. All right, y'all ready to help me? Miss Patrick, set up, good looking. At ease. So tell me about how you build trust in what you do. Tell me where you're gonna where you're at medical school now and what type of doctor are you gonna do? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Fitzpatrick. Uh, What's your first name? I got last name. Logan. Logan. Yes, sir. Uh, I go to school in Charleston, South Carolina, the Medical University of South Carolina. Yeah. Um, and you build trust by being liable, doing something that you say you're gonna do when you do it. So what type of doctor do you wanna be? 
Plan of surgery, sir. Drum surgery. Let's give him a round of applause. So he talked about trust, right? So if you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Right? So how many of you guys were surprised yesterday when y'all saw me come out for PT? I know some of y'all did like, who's this guy in the strange uniform for me? Because I hung out with Fifth Platoon. Who? Yeah. Right. But I came out because I wanted to check on you guys. I was looking at Best to see what he was doing. I like the hair best. That's good. So the first element, which is the bedrock of the profession, is trust. The second one is military expertise. Sun Tuck. So tell me, relax. Tell me what you do. So I'm an AFTEC, sir. I'm here training these young professionals in more than your nine, sir. So as a non-commissioned officer, the bedrock of our profession, tell me how you work on your military expertise every day. So working on my military expertise every day is also with making sure that I'm Reading is knowledge, knowledge from reading the basis of what I can share to others, that makes me So if you were to tell, you know, you don't have one platoon that you work with, but for all the rest of the lieutenants that are here, what would be one thing that you would tell them to make them successful as um, Well, sir, my platoon understands one concept of that common sense is what? It's supposed to be So not everybody has the same type of common sense. Put yourself out there to make sure that you're knowing the leaders, I mean, the leaders and the soldiers that are you, and how it's used to be versatile for how your leadership skills are going to be and how your leadership skills are going to be. That's good. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> so, so you're next, ma'am. Like, please don't call on me. <laughs> Come on out here. Lieutenant Ma. So what was the first one? It was trust. What was the second one? Military expertise. And what do you think the third one is? I don't know, sir. It's honorable service. So tell me, tell me where your medical school at is. I attend medical school at the University of Kentucky College of Medicine in Lexington. Bluegrass. Any any bluegrass fans here? UK fans? Not many, right? They went to basketball season. It's all good. So tell me about what it means for you to serve honorably, not as a, a lieutenant, but a future doctor. I think that honorable service just means doing everything you can to make yourself worthy of the patients that you serve. Um, so they come to you very vulnerable, very afraid. A lot of them are not as educated about their health. And I think that as a doctor, it's my responsibility to really be able to meet them where they are and to come up with a plan with them and to sort of keep my commitment to them and walk with them through every stage of their disease and make sure that they know that I'm always there for them. That's good. Let's give her a round of applause. So you know I'm the Inspector General, right? We catch people when they don't do the right thing. You ready to come work for me? Not quite yet. You don't have enough rank. You know, you don't have enough rank. Not yet. So, trust. Military expertise, honorable service. Speak French speakers here. Come on, I know somebody speaks. Speak French. Very little. Come on over here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, come on, please. Thank you for for volunteering. So tell us who you are. My name is Second Lieutenant Veronica Kang here. Okay. Uh, where are you in school? The Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. You sound like you have an announcer's voice. So you speak French. So what does esprit de corps mean? Esprit de corps? Yes, esprit de corps. <laughs> um, the literal translation is the spirit of the body. But That's all I want. I don't need anything else. <laughs> you know how these medical students are like, well, why do you want to tell us? So. Tell me, what does this freedom come from being to you? Um, I think it means just, you know, the kind of who you are, the thing that makes you what you are, and how you want to be in life. So how did you guys demonstrate this freedom come I think we just showed up for each other, um, getting in here, just knowing that we're a team, 
and you know everybody has a battle buddy everybody is everyone else's battle buddy and just making sure that no one's falling behind we're supporting each other just making everybody physically and mentally strong that's good give her and the other person a round of applause thank you so so mighty fifth platoon who where's swole Big Swole, come on with the Big Swole. Come on over here, Big Swole. We call him Big Swole because he's got muscles, right? So, the last one that we're going to talk about is Big Good Stupid. Tell us what you are first. I'm taking this thing back, Mr. Eagle. Wait, wait. You want to go to school? Yeah. I'll make you a car cross. Okay, so tell me, tell me, uh, you looking nervous now, man. Look at that. Just a bit. <laughs> He wasn't nervous when he was making the bat and the deadlift and everything. So I was like, come on, man. <laughs> Stewardship. What are you a steward of? Or well, medicine or food? Yes, sir. Whatever you want to talk about. First of all, probably the main first off is a good job. If I can be a steward of being a human being, I can be a patient. Is that important? Very important. That's good. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> so what I just talked to you about was what it means to be an army professional. Okay? So, you know, you guys work on a lot of doctors, a lot of different things. And that's in the book. It's called ADP 1.0. All right? You can look it up. And I need some family members' participation as far as this. I won't call them up there because you're going to probably start crying. Mr. Collins, you're going to start crying. So tell me, what do you think about, who's your, who's your social shirt? Sort of, uh, he, he wants to grab the mic. I got it. Um, Haley Fuller. Okay, so tell me what you think about being an army officer and an army. Extremely proud of your opportunity to follow in my footsteps, uh, having the great honor of serving the two wonderful professions, professional boards and professional nurses. That's good. That's good. I give a round of applause. <laughs> I need one mom to volunteer. Come on, mom. I took I was going to call you. Come on out here, ma'am. Please. So, who's your soldier? Uh, my soldier is the son. Second Lieutenant Ben Monster, who is in the school of IUMED in India. IU, welcome to Senator Brown. So, what do you think about him going to medical school? Oh, I, I think it's wonderful, um, of course, right, that he wants to apply himself and serve others. Like somebody was saying up there in, in the speech, you know, just use your gifts, whatever they are, to the best of your ability. And that can mean an array of things. So I think I'm most proud of that, that he's taking the opportunity to use his gifts that he was blessed with. And then, as I mentioned to you, I'm thrilled because I'm the daughter of a World War II veteran. Um, my father was one of the five or six brothers that were all in World War II. Um, so we learned a lot of the history of World War II and have some remnants of that that my son was interested in, and I know that his grandfather and his uncles would be very proud that he had this opportunity to help serve. He's mentoring these young officers. You want to go and finish my speech? <laughs> I'll be your assistant. Let's give you a round of applause. Yeah, and so I, I can't leave it out without my wife speaking really briefly. She doesn't want to talk, but I'm going to make her talk. Because I want you to understand the significance of what this means. It's a big deal, but it's a big deal not because of what you're doing today, but what you're doing in the future. So what do you think about your becoming a lieutenant in the Army Doctor? I am very proud of her. Expound a little bit. 
She's like, I, I'm going to pay for this. <laughs> no, I am. I'm, I'm really proud of her, and I'm, I'm proud of the way that she fought through this whole thing and persevered, and I think she's a much stronger person, and she's going to be a great talk. Thanks, Mom. So, I want, the reason why I went through that is because all of the stuff that you did, all of the things that you went through with the great weather at Bullis, right? <laughs> if it ain't raining, it ain't training, that's right? All those euphemisms that you've learned from the Army, I want you to take that. But I don't want you to forget it. Because what our nation needs right now are people like you, right? People not only who care about the profession of arms and their medical profession, but just care about people, okay? Here's my last task for you. That soldier that you see walking around, wandering in the PX, looking like they're lost, you gotta help them. That family that's walking around with three kids that don't know what looks like what's going on, once you, once you know what's going on, you gotta help them. Because that's what it really means to be an Army professional. So we're, we're so proud of what you are, are doing right now, but more importantly, we're proud about what you're gonna become. That's a big deal. One of you may become Surgeon General. But my last thing I will tell you, have fun in what you do. Right? Because if you're way up tight, walking around with a phone cop up your four point of contact, if you don't know what it is, I'll demonstrate afterwards. If you want to ask but keep having fun in what you do. That's what the chief means we talked about people first. And that's what it means we talked about Army Strong. Thank you. As a graduation gift, Bullock Class 211 would like to present Lieutenant General Smith with a certificate of appreciation as a guest speaker. I would like to take a moment to take, thank all those who dedicated a great deal of time and energy to make this basic officer leader's course a success. With long hours and commitment, the platoon advisors, FTX OIC, event OICs, TAC officers, and leadership of Alpha Company 187 Medical Battalion created and executed a force that trained these new officers to be soldiers, leaders, and medical center of excellence professionals. Thank you all for your support. The Director, Department of Leader Training, Colonel Shaw, the Bullock Chief, Lieutenant Colonel Huggins, and leaders of the 32nd Medical Brigade and 187th Medical Battalion welcome you to the Army Medical Regiment. You will now have the privilege of wearing the Army Medical Regimental distinctive insignia on your ASUs. Thank you, Lieutenant General Smith, for giving us the honor of being our guest speaker and providing excellent words of wisdom. To the distinguished guests, families, and friends, on behalf of the Basic Officer Leader Course Cadre and Medical Center of Excellence, thank you for your support you provide to these young officers. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the reciting of the Soldier's Creed, the singing of the Army Song, and the departure of the official party.
2021-211. Once again, congratulations. Good luck on all your future endeavors. You are dismissed.